to this night of nights, a night of amazement, a night of joy, a night in which we're blessed to be among friends and the truth that we are not alone. Whether you have been here for your entire life, if this is your first time being in this space, if you haven't been to church for a year since Christmas Eve, you are welcome to be here exactly as you need to be. Regardless of what you needed to do to get here tonight, now that you're here, there's really nothing you have to do. Maybe sit, maybe stand, sing if you want, listen if you want, just sit if that's what you need. You're welcome and you're home. Here, it doesn't matter your skin color, your culture, your race, your economic status, your ability or differing ability, your gender identity, your expression, your sexual orientation, where you find yourself on the spiritual journey, God welcomes you into the diversity of all of God's family. Sometimes we as a church, we are humans and we fail at that, but thank God that God still comes to us, fragile and vulnerable. Tonight, a night of amazement and joy, we tell a story. It doesn't take much, face it, the story tells itself. With great hospitality, it welcomes us in. And we recognize the hospitality that we uh, have taken upon ourselves as settlers, our ancestors took ownership of this land, and we give thanks and acknowledge that this is the lands of the Hunkamenum and Squahoma speaking peoples. Here in this place with the warmth of community and the light that becomes soft, we're open to the imprint of the holy in our midst, and perhaps we become aware that angels may still be singing this story our story through word and song makes room for us. The space feels like it's fairly dripping with holy, with glory, with wonder. This is a night of amazement and joy. Siblings in Christ, on this night when we celebrate the birth of Jesus, let's hear once more the message of the angels and go in heart and mind to Bethlehem to see the Son of God lying in a manger. As we hear God's holy word, let us join with Mary, the favored handmaid, and offer ourselves in service to God's call and purpose for the world. Let us bless the name of the God who brings the dawn of forgiveness and salvation to those who live in the shadow of death and despair. Let us give thanks to the one whose power has made us the children of God. As we mark the mystery of the word made flesh, let us join with the song of the angels and saints and make this place ring with our carols and hymns of praise. But first, let us remember the poverty of the birth of the Prince of Peace and pray for the poor, the cold, the hungry, and those among us who find that there is no room for them in the inn. Let us remember the flight of the Holy Family into Egypt and pray for the oppressed, refugees, the isolated, and those on the edges of our society. Let us remember that the God of glory experienced the pain of life and death, and pray for the sick, the anxious, the weary, and the bereaved. And remembering the promise that Christ shall reign forever and ever, let us pray for the rulers of the nations, for peace and justice on earth, for the unity and mission of the church that we may be a sign that God's rule on earth has already begun. With, with joy in our hearts, let us hear again the story of the birth of Christ and join with Mary and Joseph, with shepherds and all the host of heaven, 
and with all our ancestors in the faith in offering our worship. We pray. Almighty God, as we prepare with joy to celebrate the gift of the Christ child, embrace the earth with your glory and be with us as a living hope in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy. For in plain sight they see the return to the Lord of Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God.
throughout the season of Advent, we've been asking the question of what gifts Jesus will bring to a transformed world. We have spent time lighting candles, and so the question tonight, the gifts that Jesus brings to a transformed world, Jesus brings hope for a future, peace like a river, joy everlasting, love for all. Jesus shows everyone that we're equal and everyone has a place at the table. Christmas is the beginning of a new world, a better world that we are boldly invited to create together as followers of the Christ child. And so while we have lit the candles of hope and peace and joy and love over the past four weeks, tonight we light the candle of Christ. May the vision of a new world be one that continues to illumine our paths. May it be so. Amen. From the Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, he came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a fa father's only son, full of grace and truth.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he had inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. But of the sun, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hand. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing. Like a cloak, you will roll them up, and like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never end. From the Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. 
In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields while keeping a watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace amongst those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it has been told them. Over the years, I've read this passage a few times, this passage from Luke that Shannon just read, and every time, I still get struck by that last bit, Mary treasured all these words in her heart and pondered upon them. I love that. Again, a few chapters later, Mary will again ponder things, and that is when Jesus, as a teenager, stays by in the temple, and then they're trying to find him. But I wonder what exactly it is that she pondered that night. She pondered the things that the, the shepherds had told her that the angels had come to say. But I also think that she pondered the rest of the story that happened before this. The story of the angel coming to her, the story of her going to Mary, or to her cousin Elizabeth, for her singing the powerful song of the Magnificat, singing about the lowly being brought up and the powerful being brought down, I think that there are words to ponder. I wonder what words you ponder as you hear the stories, as you hear them again and again, perhaps, or perhaps for the first time. What is it that catches your heart? As we hear the story in this season of Christmas, this time of the birth of the child, the retelling of a story that meant that there was going to be some change, cataclysmic change in the world. And yet 2,000 years later, it still sometimes feels like there hasn't been any change at all. The powerful are still powerful, the mighty are still mighty, the lowly are still lowly. And yet, there are times and places in our world where we having birthed the Christ into our hearts at Christmas, reach out. And we're the ones that lift up the lowly, and we're the ones that bring down the powerful, and we talk against the things that make a whole bunch of horrible things happen in the world. I think the words of Scripture still speak through us today. They come to us to be born in us, because it isn't just a static story that started one day and ended with the birth of a child, but the birth of the child was the beginning of a new story, beginning of a new time for each person that heard it to birth that story, to find a place for them in the moment to retell, to do what it is that the stories call us to. And so on Christmas Eve, we gather to tell this story that feels really well known. And then if you read it every once in a while, you go, oh, right, I forgot that part. Oh, right, what about that part? The angels come, there's a one angel speaks, but a whole host who sing. How do we join in the song of the angels still today? 
Christmas is sometimes a really hectic time to get ready for everything, and there's lots of people around. And if you were at the 7 o'clock service, there's a lot of children and a lot of noise. But there's also moments to take time like this where we just settle into the story, where we sit in a little bit less lit place, where we look at lights and you might have your eyes being caught somewhere different places every moment as you're getting drawn into the holiness of what we have here. The holiness of community gathering of singing, of joining voices together, of retelling the story that is ancient and always new. So what will you ponder? In this season of Christmas, which starts tonight and lasts for the next 12 days, what is your pondering? What is the speaking of your heart? How do you find your place in the story? I have no answers for you because this is a really internal thinking thing that you might just someday in the next 12 go, oh, right, I was asked a question. And you might not. And that's totally fine, because it's planted. We plant seeds when we gather, so that there might be something take root. Just like that night, so many years ago, when there was no room in the inn, Mary and Joseph had to find a place, and it might have been a barn, or it might have been a birthing room, it might have been a cave in someone's house. There's lots of stories about what that might have actually been. But Christ was also born in each of us. And so we take that story, and we live into that story, and we too ponder the questions, we treasure them, and we live into birthing Christ in the world, not just to night, but throughout every day of our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen. When we gather in our church family, we often offer gifts. Uh, in your bulletin, there may have been an envelope, and you can take that to pray over what you want to do with it. And when you're leaving, there's uh, uh, offering plates on the table in the center here and over by the door there. Your presence is gift enough, but if you decide to make uh, a financial gift tonight, 
know that it is what we use as a church to serve God by being the church that God calls us to be, where we're together we live faith, know love, and voice hope. And whatever you do, by being present, by offering in that way, thank you for your generosity of spirit. Let's sing the blessing song. We're going to share at the table here at Jubilee. The sacrament of Holy Communion is for all who wish a taste of God's morsel, a morsel of God's grace. It doesn't matter how big or little you feel your faith is, whether you're a member of Jubilee or any church or what you believe about anything. This table does not belong to us, so it is ours. This table does not belong to any church. It belongs to Jesus, who is the host, and all are welcome to come to it. When it comes time for communion, uh, we have the prepackaged communions. I'll serve you, but I'll ask you to take them back to your seat, and then we'll take communion together. You tear off the first piece and get the little wafer of bread, and then tear off the second piece and get the juice. It's an easy way to keep uh, sanitary and well, and if you need gluten-free, please let me know, because we do have gluten-free bread separate. Uh, the juice in the container is gluten-free itself. There are some responses that will come up on the screen. Uh, yours are the white ones. Follow along as you wish. God is with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to God. Wisdom who comes from on high, you reach from one end of the world to the other, powerfully and gently pulling all things into their place. In our dark times, you are more beautiful than the sun, more magnificent than all the stars in the sky. Stretch forth your power once again. Come and teach us your way. We remember our ancestor Zechariah, whose song of hope looked to your coming soon. Come, great God of might and Lord of Israel. You who appeared to Moses in the fire of a burning bush, you who gave your people the law at the height of Sinai, come and redeem us. You bound yourself by oath to grandmother Sarah and grandfather Abraham, and to their descendants forever. We pray with hope for the promise that is given our ancestors. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth seek the promise of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Even now, people still walk in darkness, we yearn for coming of the light that will set us free, like the dawn from on high to break over us by the compassion and kindness of God. And so we pray, come, O day spring, like lightning in the east, the splendor of eternal light, the sun of justice, come and give light to all people who walk in darkness and the shadow of death. Come, O Emmanuel, chief of the rulers of the earth and giver of the law, hope of the nations and savior of the earth, come and save us, we pray. And in the fullness of time, you came as a child born on this night, born from the family of Jesse, standing as a sign amongst the people before the rulers of the earth are silent, the nations bow to you in prayer. Come, deliver us, delay no more. The key of David, scepter of the house of Israel, opening wide the way to God, setting the captive free from all that holds us in chain. 
come and lead us to freedom. Jesus was born, spent his life sharing with people all those years ago to show us a way. Born in scandal to marry our sister, an unmarried woman, born to a poor peasant family, born to a conquered people on the edge of a great empire. We ache for the day that you will come again, Jesus. And so what we have received from God, we now pass on again. That night that he was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread. He offered thanks to you. He broke it. He offered it to his friends saying, this is my body. It is broken. It is for you. Every time you eat with friend and stranger, remember me. In the same way, after the meal, he took a cup of wine. He offered thanks to you and then shared it with his friends, saying, take and drink. This is our very lifeblood made together in the things we have done and the lifeblood of God. It is for you. It is for many. Every time you drink of a cup with friend and stranger, remember me. Jesus, ruler of the nations and their desire, cornerstone reconciling the peoples, you fashioned us from clay. Come and save us and give us peace. And so we wait for your coming again in glory as we proclaim together the mystery that we call faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy Spirit, like the dawn from on high, break upon us and what we do here, that these simple things, bread and drink, might bear the promise of Emmanuel to those who will come again soon. This is the body of Jesus to make us new. This is the cup of blessing to set us free. We come to this meal singing a new song, a new song of hope, and we join our voices with disciples through the ages and say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We offer this to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And all God's people say... Behold what you are, become what you see. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you need gluten-free, Gabrielle will serve you over here. Come, for all is now ready. Receive and take back to your seat, and we'll consume together.
So the top layer, bread for your journey, cup of blessing. Come up. And we pray. Holy God, may what we have done here so make its mark upon us that we cannot help be but transformed in the world as you have transformed it. Bless this to our bodies, bless us to the world, and make us shine so brightly that folks know the presence of you born in our lives. Amen. We're going to sing, and I invite you to stand for the last two. moment we're going to sing Silent Night and the way we're going to do that is we'll sing three verses light candles together and then sing the last verse together once candles are lit. That way you don't have to worry about holding it too long burning yourself, all those things but before we do that may the God of infinite goodness scatter the darkness of brokenness and brighten your heart with holiness and the blessing of God, creator of the stars of night, the sun of righteousness, and the spirit who descended upon Mary, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
deep in heaven. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Thank you.